In this video, I'm going to go over uh, some more of uh, the more advanced features of uploading images and image resizing in ASP.NET Storefront. I'm going to talk about image file name override and how to modify your image resize app configs to suit your needs. I'm also going to go over uh, setting up products with multiple colors and multiple views. So let's get into it. All right, so what I've got here is a uh, a basic product page and I'm using this surf t-shirt as my example and you can see right now it's just got the very standard setup it's it's got uh, the medium image and a large image and that's about all there is to it on the product page and if you go up to shirts the category it's in you can see the icon image so we've got a pretty standard setup now and um, at this point I'm going to show you how we can play with this particular product to to get it to do different things and display different ways. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was image file name override. Let me just do a search for my surf shirt. All right. So if you click on the images tab, you can see just what I just described. There's a large, a medium and an icon image and uh, right now I've got the complete out-of-the-box setup as far as the configuration goes for your image management. Um, so you may have noticed this image file name override field up at the very top of the images tab. Uh, so what this field is all about is specifying your own image and your own image uh, name and, and basically if you use image file name override it, it literally ignores uh, all the image functionality within ASP.NET Storefront's backend and the site will just include the image that you specify here and and it only really works for the most simple of configurations where you have one view and one color so you have a large a medium and an icon but you know 90 percent of the people I talk to that's that's all they're really using it for anyway so uh, image file name override is actually really nice for SEO purposes a lot of people want to be able to specify their image file name, um, so so that is actually a good option. Uh, the downside of image file name override is that you you have to manually resize all of your images, so you know you'll need a, an image editing program to do that, and uh, you know you'll have to upload each one individually. So you'll have to do your large, you'll have to do your medium, as well as your icon. And, and I'm going to go over the steps to, to do the basic upload of an image file name. So, so let's take a look here. I've got some images set up. And so if I go into this image file name override, I've got an icon image for my t-shirt, a large image for my t-shirt, and a medium image. And I made those blue just so we can see the difference between the gray shirt that we have now. And I'm going to show you where to put those on your website. So what I've got over here in this other folder is the website. Uh, you can use FTP to connect to your website uh, or if you have RDC access it'll look a lot like this right here. So um, let me show you where to put your images. So the root of your website will look like this and you'll see an images directory so you'll want to go in there and then within your images directory you'll want to find the product directory and then you'll see icon medium and large so those are the ones that we're worried about here and here's all my product images and I happen to know uh, that it's product 8 that we're working on so you can see this is where I was talking about SEO uh, when you upload images through ASP.NET storefront each image gets uh, the product ID for the name of the file. So if you want to specify a specific product name, then you may want to use image file name override instead. So in my case, I'm using t-shirt and I've got my icon here and I'm just going to go ahead and copy that and I'll paste that over into my website. So I've got t-shirt.jpg and we got to do the same for the large paste that in and the same for the medium All 
I'm going to paste that in there. And then if I go back to the back end of my storefront site, I'll just put uh, t-shirt.jpg in the image file name override and hit update. And there we go. So there's our new blue t-shirt and you can see it's in the icon and the medium and the large that we uploaded. And the nice thing about it is it actually uses your file name. So that's pretty sweet. Uh, and I can go right back to the normal functionality by deleting that file name and hitting update again. And now the application is looking for a product image that matches the product ID. So you'll see this is this is uh, 8.jpg is what it's found because we are in product 8. Okay, so so that's the basics around image file name override. Uh, there's some good things about it and some drawbacks as well. There's a little bit more maintenance involved. Um, another good time to use image file name override is if you want to have completely different images um, for your icon, for your medium, and for your large, or maybe you want to have different dimensions and as aspect ratios. Uh, so it really kind of gives you full control over your images. So now I'd like to take a look at the app config parameters uh, surrounding image file or image resizing, and and look at some of the things we can do to change the way it works out of the box. So I'm going to open up another tab here. Here we are on the home screen. You're going to want to go to Configuration, Advanced, App Config Parameters. And then, you know, there's quite a few App Config Parameters you can see here. Uh, so I like to narrow it down to the Image Resize group, because that's got all the ones that have to do with image resizing in it. And you can see we've still got three pages to look at, so um, there's quite a few different options. But I'm just going to highlight the ones that people use most often. Um, so a brief overview, you'll see a lot in here. You'll see category image, underscore icon, underscore large, underscore medium. You'll also find, let's skip to page two here, distributor image. You'll find manufacturer image. Uh, so this naming scheme, and, and down here at the bottom, the ones we're worried about, product image. Uh, so this, this naming scheme applies to all of the different types of object images within ASP.NET Storefront. So products, manufacturers, departments, categories, all have images. Uh, most people don't use any of those except the product image though, so that's what we're going to focus on here today. Um, so let me get back to page one. And on page one you'll see these default settings. So these defaults will uh, apply to the category images, the department images, product images, and all of the different entity and objects uh, that have images associated with them uh, you'll find in these default settings. So the first one I want to look at is uh, default crop. Uh, typically when you first set up your ASP.NET storefront site this will be set to true and uh, for the most part people want to set that to false. Um, if you're uploading square images, um, the out-of-the-box dimensions are square in ASP.NET Storefront, so you may not notice the cropping. Um, but if you happen to upload a, a landscape style or a, like a page layout, I guess, a, a taller image, uh, and it gets cropped to a square, you'll notice that it lops the top and bottom off. And I actually have an example of that, so I can, I can show you what I'm talking about. So right now, I've got a, a tall example image. You can see I've kind of just stretched it out so that it's not square anymore. It's taller than it is wide. And I just want to show you what happens to that image with crop turned on or default crop set to true. So default crop is now set to true. And what I'm going to do is upload the large image uh, because the large image will create the medium as well as the icon. So here we are and I'm gonna upload my tall example and hit update.
Okay, so now you can see what happened. Uh, because this image was taller than it was wide, it just kind of lopped the top and the bottom off. And that's probably not what you're looking for. Um, so let me show you what can happen if you turn crop off. So let's go ahead and set this to false. Uh, you can either double click on it or hit the edit button on the left hand side. And then once you've changed it to false, hit update. There we go. And then after you modify one of these app config parameters, you'll have to reset the cache a lot of times to get it to take effect. So I've reset the cache, and I'm just going to repeat the process we just did and use my tall image. Oops, large, and then browse to the tall example and re upload it. And now you can see what's happening. So if I highlight this image, it's still square. It's still using the square dimensions out of the default uh, settings. But instead of cropping it off, it's actually taken the tall height and, and resized the image down. So usually that's what people are looking for. Uh, so I wanted to highlight that setting so you guys could see that. And um, most times you'll want to set that to false. So, back to the app config parameters. That's pretty good. And I guess I should say the same is true of a wide image. If, if you upload a, wi a wider image, it's wider than it is tall, it'll crop the sides off and kind of cut off your image. Okay, so uh, another good one to know about is large creates others. Let me go into our image resize group again. And you'll see on, I think it's on page two here. They're just in alphabetical order. Large creates other is set to true. And large overwrites others is set to true. So this is that functionality that I was talking about where if you upload the large image, it'll also generate the medium as well as the icon. So if large creates others is set to true when you upload the large image, all that will happen. Um, if you set it to false, you'll have to manually upload the medium as well as the icon images. They'll still get resized, you'll just have to upload three different images. Um, so if you actually want different images for your large image, your medium image, and your icon image, that's a great way to do it. You'd want to set this to false. Um, large overwrites others is just kind of related to this one. If you already have a medium and an icon image, this app config determines whether your new large image is going to overwrite those those older medium and icon images. So that's the basics on those two. And if, if you know about those three major app config parameters, uh, those will those will help you along your way in uploading images. So now I want to take a look at the actual dimensions that that get set. Um, so down here on it's page two and you're looking for product image underscore icon and you'll see that the default setting for the icon is 150 pixels and the default height is 150 uh, you can see that the large is 500 by 500 and the medium is 250 by 250 so if you want to change those you definitely can um, you can you don't have to have a square image you can have uh, you can have a rectangular image a taller image or a wide image um, but what you will want to do if you're using large creates others is to maintain your aspect ratio. So if you did uh, say 500 by 250, you'd want to carry that same aspect ratio all the way down through your medium as well as your icon. Um, and if you do that, it'll actually do a great job of resizing all of your images on the fly. Um, it's just set to square by default because uh, when you have a large product set, some products work better horizontal, some work better vertical, some are better squares, um, so it's kind of a happy medium. So that is all the resizing app config parameters that I'm going to talk about. Well, for now, anyway.